Hey tribe, welcome to HDDC, HD Designs Crochet. I'm Heather and this is my channel where you will find crochet, lots and lots of granny squares and also tips on how to turn your passion into an income. And today I have got another part in the series which is the C2C, the Crochet to Cash series and I have got loads of boss talks lined up. So the first part was the video that I cut into two and it was 10 ways to make an income from yarn and you will find those linked above. Today I have got my first boss talk within the C2C series and that is with Rosina of Zine and Rogers and she has kindly agreed to come on to HGDC and um, talk to you all about submitting to a magazine. So Rosina and I had a good chat on Zoom which I recorded for you and I am going to let you watch all of that now. Hi Rosina, thank you for coming onto the channel. <laughs> Hi Heather, how are you? I'm okay, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. I've just started a new crochet project. I'm sorry if I keep looking down. <laughs> That's okay. What are you working on? I am making a C to C baby blanket for a friend of mine because um, she has just told us that she is adopting a baby. Oh, congratulations to her. That's lovely. So as you know, I'm doing the C to C series, the crochet to cash, crochet to cash series. And I've got loads of different bosses coming on, just like you, to share your <laughs> and your experiences. And I asked you to come on today to talk about all of your magazine sub submissions because you are like the queen of it now. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a few. Um, so hopefully we'll tell everybody a little bit about the process and what goes into it and how you got into it. So shall we start with um how long and what got you into submitting to magazines i think it's been about four years but i always get hazy on my memory with that i thought it was i didn't think it was that long but four years ago i'd been blogging for a while um making making stuff up with crochet patterns as i went and i thought i'm now designing these things i'm not just making it up these are these are new ideas and I want to share those with people. I want to see if I can actually get paid to do this. And I thought that for a while, but I was a bit frightened. And and then I don't know what triggered it, but one day I just went, well, you can think it or you can do it, so do it. And so I went and flicked through the magazines and found email addresses of the editors and I emailed them all and I said, I am a designer, I have ideas. I want you to I want you to have my ideas I want to sell them to you um, a couple of them ignored me and then one of them put me on a submission list and one of the editors said oh my gosh yes we love your ideas we'd like to buy one and just like that I was a designer for magazines and it was just so quick and I couldn't believe it because I thought I'd be fobbed off by everybody and I didn't care that I was fobbed off by three or four I got one, so I was happy with that. Um, and actually, as soon as that publication happened and I was in that magazine, I was able to go back to the other design, the other magazines yeah. and say, look, I've been published. Can I be published with you oh, too? Wow. <laughs> wow. What's that? And then you were like, do you want me now, now I'm published? Well, it almost is like that because they all went, yes, here you go, you're, you're on our list now. Wow. So there was, there was no kind of... Um, ignoring or anything like that they just sort of that just seemed to be enough but actually that was four years ago and now I think probably you could slide into their dms and, and get <laughs> somewhere that way whereas like at that time I don't think I I mean I wasn't mm, sort of using Instagram that strongly so yeah. I was only just sort of finding my feet with that so you could probably pester people on Instagram as well because they're all all the major magazines are active on there so but yeah that's how I got started. Then I was put on their lists, and then you get emailed the um, the calls for submissions, and you go from there. What do so you've got any ideas? What do the calls for submissions look like? 
well usually it's an email saying they are looking for um ideas for future issues those issues can be um as much as a year in advance most of the time they're not they're about three to six months in advance so um i think most people know that um, in july loads of people are crocheting for christmas mm -hmm. um which is probably about right and yeah so the, um, they send out these course for submissions for future issues and they quite often have a mood board and they sort of tell you what sort of thing they're looking for with themes and ideas in colour um, color schematics, colour schemes, not schematic, um, and lots of different sort of things to get you inspired and get sort of um, to get you started on on ideas that will fit with their theme. Oh, but you get some interesting themes as well. Well, quite often it's seasonal, so every year it will be, you know, Easter, Valentine's Day and Christmas and and all of those sorts of things. So you have the standard ones. And then yeah, they do the sort of you mix and match depending on the time of year. Um and it's always nice as well. Um you find that's quite a challenge. You know, if you're used to crochet in a certain way, um you only maybe you only crochet blankets, but actually in the summer they might not want as many blankets. So you have to think think differently. And it depends on whether or not because I know you have a certain brand style and you want your you love your granny squares and really want to show those show those off in the magazines yeah. whereas uh, me i'm just like a free for all will sort of try anything and everything so if if the magazine wants it i'll try and sort of mold my way around them yeah rather than just an, um just to see what i can do really yeah you get lots of experience you try loads of different things Whereas I'm very stubborn and if it's not what I want to do, I'm not doing it. I think it, there's no right or wrong way at all. And I think, it, yeah, it could damage your brand if you had a very niche style. Um, I've definitely seen a difference in the things that I do for myself and the things I do for other people. It's hugely different. But it sort of is a learning experience because it means that you move forward perhaps and you grow and you get to know what you like and what you don't. Lots of fun. You get to try different yarns, different styles. Um, that reminds me, you're an ambassador for King Cold, aren't you? Yes, I am. And I don't know if they regret that decision because sometimes my ideas are a bit off the wall and I'm not conventional. <laughs> <laughs> and so if I make a giant Stevie Nicks shawl, they might have wanted something a bit more subdued and a bit a bit more classic. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't said anything. But. Or, or I might cut up one of their balls of yarn for the for the sake of Instagram. <laughs> All that and I was like, what did you do? <laughs> I know lots of people um were very upset that I I ruined a ball of wool just for a photograph. I'm sure you can use it in something. I'm sure. Stuff. Well, yeah, I can't be bothered to make tassels or pom poms with it. I can't be bothered. To do it. Somebody suggested I tie it all back together. No, <laughs> stuffing probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, in terms of submitting to a magazine, how long does it take? Um. Do you have to make the samples yourself? How does all that work? Okay, so um, I did print off a couple of my um, my sort of usual style of submissions that I would forward to them. So once you've received the mood board from them with their with their themes and their ideas, you um, come up with your suggestions. Um, you would need to probably make some sketches, make some swatches, and work out some stuff that you need to tell them, some information. So what yarn are you thinking of using what colors would it be in um what size and all of that yeah. however you can sort of make your suggestions but it's not often that they will um, it depends which magazine actually but uh, some will dictate what yarn you're using you get no choice others it's more of a conversation and you can sort of throw ideas about and then um sometimes you get almost complete autonomy they just love you know they go yeah what you suggested is brilliant and amazing so it really does depend but if you're going to design for magazines you have to kind of work with them and sort of accept that 
the, the yarn might be different or they might want you to use a different weight or they might want you to use a certain brand or lots of different things. So sometimes it's quite strict. So um, that's something to bear in mind. But basically what you do, and these are so rubbish, <laughs> but it turns out that they work because these are designs that have been accepted, right? <laughs> so I've printed off this. I don't know if you can see. But it's, um, it's a really old one. Um, I didn't want to show one that hadn't been published yet. This is from a couple of years ago. And so I've done a swatch, yeah. I've done a sketch, and I've done my suggested yarns. Mm. That's all. And I've sort of said what my inspiration is. I think for this one, I've, I called it all the fun of the fair, and I think like it was a circus-themed issue for the magazine. And so I took my inspiration from those big top tents that are all stripy. So I've, I've got the stripes and they're all sort of um, vertical, vertical stripes. <laughs> Do you ever get confused between horizontal and vertical? No, okay. <laughs> um, so I've suggested here that I would make it in an Aran weight yarn um, and suggested the yarn brand and the yarn um the fibers of that yarn and what colors and I've sort of just given a brief description of how I would construct it as well but I think if you went for pages and pages of ideas and then submitted that they're not going to read it all I mean I don't know how many ideas they get per issue but I can imagine that you know if they have 25 designs in a magazine they may well get a hundred ideas given to them I don't I don't know what the figures are for that so they're not going to sit there and read an essay so you have to make it really snappy I think and visually I mean it's not exactly like banging but it looks and like here's another one see so it's just a square a, a sketch a swatch and the yarn and this one has um I don't know if you can see very well at all, but it's got like a schematic of how it would be made as well. Yeah. I reckon other people probably have more visually attractive submissions than mine, but it does the job, so. Yeah, you don't need to spend loads of time to, if that works. And I want to spend my time crocheting, not drawing up the perfect picture. I think they look really good, and I quite <laughs> like that idea for when I send out to when people for testing i can just do a little <laughs> overview like that You've been yeah definitely definitely so and, and then if you're lucky enough to have your design be successful then they'll contact you sometimes it can be a few weeks wait they're not going to get back to you the next day necessarily so it might be a few weeks while they sift through and sort it out um especially if they're doing several issues at once so you know that takes time and they work on cycles too so um quite often i guess it's a monthly cycle so if it's near publication date they're probably or even printing printing time they're probably scurrying around being really super busy trying to get it all together so i usually give them a while and i might well email them back and go did you like it but not very often because that would be really annoying for them i reckon if if 100 people did that each week or whatever yeah that's interesting actually like the, the time between it you kind of I kind of in my head was like it would be an instant thing but like you said they've got a schedule and other things ongoing so they do often give you a date like they'll say if you haven't heard by such and such a time then assume you're not um you're not successful in your application or whatever it's called um but I take that with a pinch of salt because sometimes the deadline will come and go and then the week the week will pass and then they'll get then you'll be sent the email going, actually we'd really like that design. <laughs> so don't sell it to somebody else in the meantime. Because I have done that and uh regretted it. Oops. So <laughs> oh, no. and then yeah. you just be patient. Have lots and lots of patience. That's a huge, huge thing. Yeah. Not my strongest uh <laughs> So then once they say yes, do they discuss how much they're going to pay you then or do they tell you after? Um, payment is discussed when they um, say we would like to use your design. Yeah. 
um, quite often they will give you um, I think in the email it will usually say um, we want to pay you this much this is the deadline this is the issue it will be in this is the issue publication date um, they also say I think if you suggested yarn they'll say yep yeah, that's fine go for that or they'll say we were thinking of using this actually how do you feel about that and you can sort of go mm, yeah I guess <laughs> or if you felt very strongly that it wouldn't work go back and tell them why it wouldn't work and your solution always offer a solution rather than just go no that sucks um that's not going to help anybody um there is some room for negotiation but um ultimately design work is not the best paid um they have a business to run and they can't pay the designers that much. designers are not paid mega bucks wherever you go so um yeah don't expect to make your fortune but do expect to get an enormous high from it so yeah that's your payment get a high and then i guess you've seen your following grow since you've been in magazines because people find you there come looking for you I'd like to yeah have. and it, it gets to it gets to the point where actually people want to make it because you designed it and because you've been a designer for such a long time they trust that you can do a good job yeah. so that's really nice yeah definitely. um i was going to say something that's completely gone I'm sure it's an important point <laughs> i don't know can't remember it was about being a designer in a magazine <laughs> obviously no i don't know um i was gonna say i was asked to submit to a magazine one of the ones in the uk and they said it ranges from like 50 pounds about 240 pounds do you think that's a fair representation of what you might be able to get yes definitely if um it's a small project you're looking I bit for um for small projects maybe like a hair accessory or a little purse maybe it would be about 40 to 50 pounds yeah. um the pair of wrist warmers that i designed recently with i got paid 55 pounds for i hope it's okay to to say this i don't see why it would be um confidential yeah. um it's fine and then the, the the higher prices tend to be for bigger projects obviously um so blankets if, it, if you're making a bed size blanket then you're looking at around 200 to 250 pounds i've not designed any garments for magazines so i don't know how much they charge for those um but you will soon hey we'll soon and i'll give oh. you the book and then you'll be away yes i know yeah i'll learn how to grade i'm i'm well on it with the cardigans and the jumpers at the moment i'm i've got so many ideas but all in good time i'm going to take my time that's good because I'm really looking forward to seeing what you come out with. <laughs> um, and then also, I was going to ask you a question and it's gone out of my mind. I remembered something actually. I remember remembered my point from earlier and that is that one of the things you could class as payment is that nine times out of ten you get the thing, you'd get the design returned to you. Yeah. So you get to keep it. So depending on what it is, if that indie dyed yarn and you've got four skeins in your project that's a decent amount of money yeah beautiful beautiful quality wool then you've got that forever um do so buy the yarn or do you supply the yarn um they supply it uh, sometimes i've been asked i've been asked to um source it myself and then put it on my invoice but most of the time it will be sent to to me from them they will contact the, the yarn companies and get it sent sometimes if i know if i've got a contact at said yarn company i'll just go don't worry i'll do it i'll contact them and get it sent directly to me that's fine okay. um that happens from time to time i didn't know that that's definitely worth knowing because it might be a small amount of money but if you get in the yarn and you get to keep it for a lot i know that's why you want to choose a good one you know yeah. <laughs> Choose something that you want to maybe try out or is a little bit perfect for experimenting. Perfect. Yeah. No, I like that because, okay, yeah, it's not going to pay all your bills, but like you said, you're learning, you get a bit of yarn. Oh, I like that. And Just, yeah, I was a bit hasty on my very first um, 
on my very first design that I was six via doing a call for submission, I was a bit hasty and I went out and bought the yarn because I wanted it there and then. And I didn't written, they did sort of go, um, you don't have to do that. We do that bit. And I was like, Oh my God, I didn't know. So, you know, you live and learn. Ooh. Yeah. I like that because if you, like you said, if you get indie dyed yarn and you keep that, that in itself is quite an investment. In, in but they will know if you're taking the mic. Yeah. <laughs> like, I want £600 skein, please. But. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, exactly. And actually, I've been doing this for four years. I have got four years' worth of leftovers in my cupboard. You do not want to take the mic because you will end up with more yarn than you could possibly ever use. And so actually, I, I find myself underestimating a lot of the time because it's like, I don't want any more of that. I can't bear it. No, I would never take the mick, but I do like, I like the thought that I would get the yarn for it because in all honesty, I'm going to end up with my acrylic and you know that, but just the thought of getting a yarn parcel arrive. It's very exciting. It's really nice. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's like Christmas every time. Oh, wow. I think only one time if I if I received the yarn and and sort of thought, oh, I don't like that. I don't like it at all. And actually, so much so, I never told anybody. I didn't. You know, usually I shout it from the rooftops when I've got a design in a magazine or if, if I've had a pattern released. Um, I'm so proud of it every time. And that's another good point as well. Is it's like don't just submit any old idea. Submit ideas you love. Because otherwise it's not it's not good for anybody and make sure you love every single one. But the yarn I mean, I would have loved this design, but the yarn was hideous. And so I never told anybody about it. I didn't like the colours, I didn't like the texture of the yarn, it felt horrible, it felt foamy. And I think it might have been sort of I mean it was is it on the front cover? Don't know. I can't remember now. <laughs> but I remember looking at it just going, no, I don't like it. <laughs> so I never told anybody. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Gosh. Which is quite hard because if you've got to put the time in, you don't like it. It's a learning curve. It's a learning curve. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, I've seen quite a lot of your designs in magazines. I don't buy as many magazines as I used to because it was getting like my yarn where I was subscribed to all the magazines <laughs> that were all stacking up. Um, but yeah, I've seen quite a few of yours in there, which I think that's nice. And like you said, you get to shout from the rooftops that you've got a, pu a pattern published. It's, it's a really good feeling, for sure. Yeah. Definitely. Do they send a copy of the magazine to you when you're featured? Uh, yes. Ooh. Yeah. Um, they don't, if, you, if you have an interview in a magazine, so sometimes that happens um, you tend not to get it um, so it's literally just if you've got a design featured any other reason why you might be in that magazine you might get sent a pdf version of the page you're in yeah. but not the whole mag um, I got featured once for this podcast and they sent me the magazine and I was like look at me <laughs> We, we, we were in the same one was, were we in next to each other yeah I think so and I was like <laughs> I'm with all these like famous people <gasps> it's always exciting I remember going to the shop to buy that and then I bought the wrong issue so I, I didn't actually ever get to see it <laughs> no, I'll scan you a, a copy of that piece oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> the post-it note upstairs my grandma went out and bought a copy I think my dad went and got a copy <laughs> <laughs> I do remember buying a copy of the very first issue I was in. I bought a copy for my nana and sent it to her. So that was a proud moment, yeah. Yeah, that is really cool. Well, you have opened my eyes to the world of submissions. Um, just because you get the yarn, you get the magazine. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I know these are all perks of the job, aren't they? So you may not get like cash. But you get paid in other in other means, and there was there's another thing I was going to say. It depends on the magazine, um, but if you're if you're fortunate enough, some of them will also return the tech edited pattern to you. So you write up the pattern and you send it off by a deadline, yeah. and then it will be tech edited by the magazine's tech editors um, as standard. Um, it's becoming more and more prevalent that magazines then return the tech edit back to you. So you go over it again 
to make sure that the tech edit is correct as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a bit of a, so you have to be prepared to work, not just, it's like, you don't think as soon as you've sent off your, your sample, that is it, job done, it's not. You do have to be prepared to do the other bits of work as well. Mm -hmm. And then um, once it's published, um, if you're lucky, you get the tech edit returned to you and then you can use that to sell on again once the rights revert back to you uh, you sign a contract with the magazine uh, depending on which one it is it's, uh, it can be three months four months six months once the time is up it's all yours again and you can do what you want with it but um you do agree to a certain time where it's only exclusive to that magazine um which is why quite often when people sort of go oh my gosh can i can i buy the pattern from you directly and you have to go oh no sorry not yet <laughs> you have to wait um, and then if you're super duper lucky the magazine will also if you ask nicely send you the photographs so that you can use them on your social media and the subsequent pattern that you publish should you wish to publish it yourself independently so that again you can make money on it again after it's been in the magazine which is brilliant yeah which is good because tech editing has a cost to it so that's been covered and then mm -hmm photographs to get professional photographs again that's got a cost to it and then you can then add it to your pattern bank and then that's passive income every time someone downloads your pattern which absolutely I love waking up to notifications that someone downloaded my pattern whilst I was asleep I love that I'm like thank you <laughs> you don't have to do anything you're you're in the land of nod and and somebody's there giving you a little bit of money, which is a little pat on the back each time, just to say, keep going, well done. Keep going, which I love. So I did, I do like that magazines let you have it back after a certain amount of time. I see quite a lot of other designers saying, oh, I've got the rights back now, so I'm making another sample or it's ready to be released. Um, and then you can always put a little thing where you sell it, like as seen in blah, blah, blah magazine. Yeah, which I do. I, I do quite often do well actually I think you know if you're selling it on again afterwards I think it's only courteous courteous anyway to say this was featured in blah blah and also give credit to the photographer um and I don't think you ever get told who the tech editor is and I wonder how many tech editors there are out in the world yeah. because um each time you know, quite often they will email you to sort of question if there's if there's an issue with how you've written something they might they might want to know about it and each time it's a different a different person so mm. I find it really curious that there's sort of a, a, a this secretive group of people there definitely needs to be more not transparency like I don't think they hide away but I'd love for there to be like a central place that you find all these people um, it would be brilliant I do want to put I've got some one of my tech editors coming on to do an interview and I want to put something on my Instagram where people can comment below if they're a tech editor and what country they're in so that there's somewhere to go to for now. Because right now it seems to be mostly word of mouth, doesn't it? Or you ask another designer and that's how you find out. Yeah. And it's a bit of trial and error because not every tech editor is going to suit your style and your personality. Exactly. And you you know it can take a while to find the right one um if you're lucky you'll find the right one straight away or or maybe not you know it's just sort of um seeing what happens but um, there are yeah i think there are loads out there i just don't know who half of them are yeah definitely need sort of open the window so we can see all of them and yeah. i was gonna add as well sometimes they don't have the availability so you might need something pretty sharpish or they might just be jam-packed for a while so I think it's good to have connections with a, a couple um especially because I want to put like a collection out and then that's like 10 patterns so uh yeah it'd be good to uh, find more and I bet all of us that are designers I'm a designer now um use a different tech editor as well probably but I do, I do know a couple who have done tech edits for books, yeah, specifically. So you that with with a ten project um, kind of piece, you may well want to find a tech editor who fo who focuses on that, and that's their expertise because they'll be familiar with that um, rather than somebody that just does the odd one here or there. Yeah. Um, 
I think a good way to find them is to look at other people's patterns because they should have credited the tech editor. Do, they don't do it in magazines though, do they? I don't know. I think it's probably a bit at the front. I mean, to be honest with you, I forget half the time on my own patterns and um, only a handful of them have got it because I, I just forget. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but I'm going to endeavour to do it. I, I did it on my last one. Did I do it on the one before? Maybe. But I saw you done it. I was like, oh, should I be doing that? Oh. <laughs> I did just because it, you would feel like a photographer and I just want them to be able to add it to their portfolio of work. You're absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. And I use a template to write up my patterns so it prompts me. I don't have to remember because I just, I've left it blank and you're adding the bits and bobs. Um, and if more people did, we'd be able to find more. They're like hobbits. Okay. Find more, <laughs> more tech editors. Um, yeah, so I think, is there any more questions? I don't know. I mean, when it comes to magazine submission specifically i can't think of anything else but if, if it's just about being a designer you just have to keep making that would be my only other advice making things mm, creates new ideas constantly yeah. so if you're working on something it kind of generates mm, the fuel to to do more work and you get more ideas and then uh, then there comes a point where you've just got far too many and you don't know what to do and then you've got, you want to make everything <laughs> Yeah. Have you read the book Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert? No. Basically says what you said. Maybe you could get it on audio. Um, the more you are creative, the more creativity comes and finds you. So she sort of says like creativity is like these little clouds that kind of go around. And if they find you working, then they want to come to you. And so that's why you constantly get more creativity when you're working. Whereas if you're not working, Creativity doesn't want to come to you because it wants to be made real, so it'll go elsewhere. <gasps> Such well, I don't understand that. I'd be like, no, I want, I want it all. <laughs> <laughs> but also, like that, if you try and take too many and you take too long, then that that creativity would be like, well, I'll leave you to do what you're doing and go elsewhere. And you do see that. You think, oh, I've got this amazing idea, and then like so everything is all about balance, isn't it? Yeah, six months later, a designer will have your idea, and you think you left me. <laughs> That's so true. It's so true. Um, um, yeah. What else was I going to say? Oh, I'll tell you what. I wrote this is it's very out of date, and actually, I need to update it. But about three years ago, I wrote a blog post about how I became a crochet designer, yeah. and it talks about design submissions and all of that. And, right, and I reread it this morning just to sort of re remind myself <laughs> about it all. And one of the tips I've given is tell the tax man. Yeah. Because so many people forget about that as well. If you're selling your work to magazines, you must tell the tax man. Yeah. You've got to declare your income. Um, do you do your own tax returns? Do you use Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't make mega bucks. It's not hard um so i just do it myself right at the very last moment <laughs> right before the deadline i <laughs> i have to do tax for my day job so i could do my own but i can't face doing it <laughs> my cousin is an accountant so oh well bonus he does it and then i use quickbooks um so just to track the ins and outs of everything yeah um, I probably should use QuickBooks or something because I just use a spreadsheet, which is pretty basic. Well, I mean, if it does the job, it's up to you. QuickBooks, I'm, I'm going to do an entire thing on finances because it's kind oh, that's of, a good idea. If nobody teaches you, you, you kind of have to learn through trial and error and you don't want to get like a tax liability. That's a, a horrible error. Um, but for QuickBooks, I've found... You can link it to your bank account and your PayPal and then you just list like what's going out and why. You can take pictures of the receipt um, and it, as you log in, it tells you like, you've made this much, this is how much tax is due. And then... Oh my gosh, I need to get on this. Yeah, so have a look. I managed to get a discount code. I don't know if I've got a referral code or not, but I got it for half price for the first three months, which is like three quid or something. And then it's, I think it's seven pound a month, so... Okay. It's, I think there's different 
like everything, there's different memberships that you can go on. But um, every time, I don't know about you, but because I have income from YouTube and here and there, it just tracks everything and then tells That's me. Brilliant. Yeah. Whereas I just, yeah, I sort of, I add in on my spreadsheet each, I've got a column for each different thing and then I just auto sum it after each month. <laughs> that took, a couple of years ago, I was writing it all down. I didn't even use a spreadsheet. Even if you write it down on a spreadsheet, as long as you don't have to pay for QuickBooks, as long as you keep a note of it. But for me, I know I'm not going to update that spreadsheet. I just, and then it's going to be two minutes before it's due and I'm going to be like, <laughs> what's come in? What's gone out? Where's my money? Yeah. Um, I, do, I, sort of, I don't do it every month. I, I, I sort of usually wait three months and then I go, right, okay, now I've got some work to do. Yes, definitely. And also, because I think you've got your patterns on different platforms as well, haven't you? Yeah. It all comes in at different times, differing amounts. And I don't know if I'm doing it wrong, and I even emailed them about this, but you, on Ravelry, I set the, the money as um, sterling, so um, the English monies. <laughs> And then that, so all the patterns are charged uh, GP, GBP. Yeah. And then when you get your invoice, it's in dollars, which makes no sense to me. So I emailed them and they were just like, we don't know what you're talking about. And I was just like, thanks, Ravelry. Well done. Another thing to be annoyed about. <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to ask the group later because I don't, my patterns don't go through Rav. So you have to go on to my. Well, that might be an incentive for me to do the same. I'm not there yet. I need, I need a PA. I need somebody who will do all this stuff for me because it's not my forte. I would rather be just sat crocheting all the time. I just want to make my samples. You can get a virtual assistant. I know. I'd be, I wouldn't earn any money. <laughs> That's the thing. You've got to, and I'm sure lots anyone watching this right now, like we have to balance how much we can make to cover the cost so i in my head i'm like right how many patterns will i have to sell to cover the cost of that i mean it an investment and but then if if i sit and do it myself how many patterns could i get done in that time and it's just uh, you're constantly balancing it balancing the, the tech editing is invaluable you must get a proper pattern tech edited i've seen so many really bad patterns because they quite clearly have not had anybody go over it yeah um and if you have one bad pattern then a lot of your audience are not going to come back to you yeah definitely i found um i'm only three patterns in but because i put so much detail into revival people trust it and then now that there's a few patterns on there and i'm in a different couple of different places people are more trusting to get that pattern but had that pattern been poop it would have put people off. R rightly so, it would have put people yeah. I mean, I have to say, I need to go over all my patterns. That would be a great thing to get a, a, a crocheting expert virtual assistant to redo all my old patterns because right at the beginning, you can think that it's spot on. Yeah. And, it, and it's just not quite up to the same standards as I want them to be now. And it's, it's really interesting. Yeah, because you learn and you're evolving and your style changes and you want to put different things in there. Um, yeah, I get that. I'm three patterns in and there's already changes I want to make. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just constant. It's always keeping on top of everything all the time. Yeah. Um, but aside from the virtual assistant, just doing little bits here and there is kind of working for me. You know, like trying to carve out 20 minutes to do something um but you can i set my website up, blah, blah, website up on squarespace and it was really quick really quick um and it's really simple like it's just really easy to build i don't know where where have you got your blog where's your blog home? i'm i'm wordpress and i was i've always been told that wordpress is the best However, it's not necessarily user friendly. Um, and luckily, I know somebody who's quite tech orientated, so I got a lot of help. Um, but to be honest with you, I, yeah, I, it's not my forte. So it's not something that I 
spend enough time on I should spend more time on it and I can't kind of ignore it because I, I don't want to do it <laughs> which is a terrible attitude I had a blog many moons ago on WordPress and I found with WordPress it's got brilliant scope and you can do so much with it but as a beginner starting out it was overwhelming and that's mm -hmm. what this time round for my website because I want to start a blog at some point I went with Squarespace just because you kind of put blocks in so you want a picture there you put a block you want to and it's very like intuitive and simple it doesn't mm. scope that WordPress has but it means that I'm not spending ages looking at it thinking what do I do um, I can't remember what they said exactly and what um what advice it was but I can always um come back and tell you later or just put you in the direction of um studio studio cotton they're like a branding marketing platform yeah. and they they always had really good advice about um which websites to use and why and what for and all of that yeah um because we've all got our own different reasons and preferences but yeah uh I have enjoyed talking to you. I feel like we could talk about so many different. I know. Well, we've got we've we've got another meeting. <laughs> I have to leave because we've got another meeting. But thank you so much for joining, sharing all your experience. Of well, I hope I've covered everything. But um, if I haven't, then people can ask. That's fine. Yep, yeah, definitely. And you need to let everybody know. I mean, I'm sure everybody already knows who you are, but what where you're where they can find you. I completely didn't tell anybody at the beginning, did I? I, I can't even remember if I said my name. <laughs> I am Rosina, <laughs> and I can be found everywhere on the internet as Zines and Roger. Um, that's Instagram, WordPress, Pinterest, YouTube, Facebook, so I don't use it very much, but it's on there. And, um, oh my God, I joined TikTok. <gasps> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> But yes, Deans and Roger, most places. Okay, I will put all the details on the screen at the start anyway, in case we didn't say it, because I don't know if we said it. Um, and yeah, if anyone has any questions, they can comment below or come and find you. And uh, if there's loads of questions, I'll just ask you to come back again. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> So thank you so much for look how much crochet I got done. I started. I know. I well, I haven't made as much as you. I've just done that. <laughs> but I did like start um after you hit record so yeah i was i was like two lines in at that point but yeah it's been great chatting to you and thank you so much and i will see you in five minutes for our next chat <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much hella thank you see you soon bye thank you so much rosina for coming on to hgdc and sharing all of your insights and information with us now she did ask that i also share a couple of other points with you okay so rosina messaged me after and asked me just to mention that if you sell your pattern the rights to your pattern to the magazine so they never revert back to you you will get a bit more money from that but then on the other side you won't be able to sell that pattern onwards afterwards in your own name so that's something to bear in mind and the other thing um i'm just laughing because um i think on most of these interviews i've said to people sorry i've got full of up my nose or in my mouth and they've all been like you've always got yarn on you somewhere anyway anyway um rosina also asked me to mention that um a designer should have a portfolio somewhere that they can then direct the magazine or whoever to so they can have a look at the work that you have done and you have designed wherever you keep that your website Ravelry Instagram whatever it is so I hope all of that information has been truly insightful and that you've enjoyed this first installment in the C2C crochet to cash series with our first boss I have got so many more lined up for you so so many more so Tribe, I hope you really, really enjoyed that and that you took lots of information and that has motivated you to get yourself into a magazine. The best thing you can do is subscribe to this channel and make sure you find me on Instagram because where possible, I'm going to put up a question box in my Instagram story so that you can ask whoever is coming on to the series 
next. Now I can tell you that I've got two more already recorded and they will be up in the following weeks so click like, click subscribe and make sure you drop any comments below thanking Rosina. Okay tribe, see you again soon. Bye!